Hello everyone, welcome to the Geo Ecologist. I am Dr. Krishnanand and you have been watching my videos on geography and this series on environmental geography. So in today's session, we are going to look at the environmental policies at world perspective and also in Indian perspective and various aspects of environmental policies. So before we go ahead, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and also do share the videos with others as well. So now let's discuss about environmental policies in context to the world and also some Indian perspective. So what does this policy mean? The word policy is originating from Greek and Latin that we say is politia which means citizenship and from polites that is citizen from polis word city remember metropolis so polis is the city that is the key word now when we are saying about city citizenship right or a citizen what does it mean it basically refers to the commitment of an individual or a citizen or an organization to actually obey the laws regulations and other things related to mechanism concerning environment Right. So we are talking here about environmental policies. Basically, it means that those policies which are relevant for the regulation of environmental associated issues or challenges. Right. So that's important here. Now, these issues generally include air and water. That is pollution aspect, waste management aspect ecosystem management aspect, maintenance of biodiversity, protection of natural resources, wildlife and endangered species. Now remember, all throughout the lecture series on biogeography and environmental geography, we kept talking about all these aspects, about pollution aspect, about management of environment aspect, about ecosystem aspects, right? about protection of natural resources. So all those things are part of the policy framework. It means what are those rules and regulations? What are those laws which govern this efficiency or important aspect of environmental protection, conservation, sustenance, all these things, right? So environmental policies needs to be looked at in the light of our own commitment, individual's commitment along with institutional commitment or societal commitment towards the environment. Right? in terms of its regulation, in terms of its laws and all those aspects that are concerning the major environmental issues. Right. So now let's elaborate further more. So environmental policy comprises of two major terms. Remember environment itself and policy itself. Now let's deconstruct and understand this in a totality. So environment refers to what? Physical ecosystems but can also take into consideration the social dimension that is quality of life, health and also the economic dimension that is your resource management and biodiversity aspects. We already know about this in details, right? So this is the environment part, the biophysical part, the socio-economic part of it, right? Now comes the policy part. So policy is basically a course of action or principle that is adopted or proposed by a government, a party, a business or an individual, right, to follow in this particular way, right. So now combining this environment and policy, it makes environmental policy. And remember, it focuses upon problems arising from the human impacts on environment. That is the key aspect here, that human impact on environment is the key of any environmental policy that how to manage the impact how to reduce the impact or an adverse impact especially right which acts on to human society by having a negative impact majorly on human values such as good health or the clean and green environment right so we are talking about making the society clean and green we are talking about good health conditions good quality of life right so these norms that are there these course of actions that needs to be taken care in order to achieve that good quality life is what we are talking as environmental policy so united nations economic commission for europe through unece that is what we say environmental performance reviews evaluates the progress made by its member countries in improving these environmental policies. So remember this United Nations Economic Commission, right? UNECE. So United Nations Economic Commissions for Europe. So this is basically one of the organizations that talks about the performance review in terms of your policy framework. And it also talks about how to maintain clean and green environment, good quality of life around the member countries. Now, we talk about major principles of environmental protection. So what are the basic principles? Now, look into these principles. 
One is called polluters pay principle. Now when we say polluters pay principle, it's not a new concept. Its origin is very old. But remember, as a formal definition, as a formal introduction to polluters pay principle, it came from Agenda 21, the Rio Declaration. Right there, it was clearly mentioned. So, polluters pay principle works on PPP model that we say. Right. So, Organization of Economic Cooperation and Development (OECD) has suggested this particular principle as a general basis for environmental policy everywhere in the world. It states what it says that if you are polluting, you must pay the cost. So, the cost should be borne by the polluters. For example, if you have an industry of yours. You should bear the environmental tax. You should bear the cost of, you know, utilizing those particular protection technologies for your industry that does not harm the environment, right? So the cost has to be borne by the polluters. Then it comes to the user's pay principle. The other one is UPP. This was PPP, polluters pay principle. This is UPP principle. So what is this UPP principle? It is considered as part of PPP only. That is polluters pay principle only. It means basically that whosoever are the users, who are the consumers of the resources, right? They must pay for it. So it is applied when resources are being used and consumed in that case. Right? Because it's saying users. Then comes the precautionary principle and the most important principle in terms of environmental conservation and management. Remember the main objective of pre precautionary principle is to ensure that a substance or any activity, any activity or any action of human being which poses threat for the environment has to be prevented. That's what is the whole idea, right? And for prevention, you must take into account what is the substance or what is the activity and make a important decision on it. That how this substance or these activities can be reduced. For example, single-use plastic. So this can be prevented, right? Microplastics can be prevented through particular channels if those kind of awareness programs are created, those kind of laws are enforced in the society that no one is supposed to actually use single-use plastic. Right. So that is a precaution. If we don't take precaution, then after something happens, that is just prevention. Right. So precaution is the beginning part, the initial part before it has actually gone out in the environment to pollute. So we must be precautionary in terms of our attitude, in terms of environmental protection. Right. So these are the three major principles that we talk about. And there are several other principles as well. But majorly we focus upon these three principles for environmental protection policy. Then comes international policy instruments. So what are the policy instruments at international level? How do we tackle global environmental externalities? Because there are several countries, they have different norms, they have different policies. So what is that cost effective global outcome that we can bring out through particular policy? So first we see here, unless individual countries undertake cost effective domestic greenhouse policy, it cannot be a global efficient program. So individual countries have to take important steps. Remember, for the global efficiency to actually go in a better way. So the policy instruments adopted internationally will not lead to the goal if individuals don't do this. So it first idea is individual countries must undertake this cost effective measures for the greenhouse policy, domestic greenhouse gas protection, or you can say the lessening of emission, right? So the second part is each individual country is free to choose its own instrument or combination of instrument. So what are these instruments? In what ways are we going to look into the instrument? So the major instrument that we look here is these three, the international carbon tax, tradable quotas and tradable pollution permits. So if you want to go into these details of international policy instrument, you must read these international carbon tech tax system, tradable quotas, tradable pollution permits and how this could be implemented, right? That how you can trade in carbon. So carbon trading is one aspect of it. So some of the international policy instruments are supposed to be this, but how far and how beneficial it would be? It all depends upon after application and monitoring of when these things come into the world. So these are some surge suggestions. These are certain instruments that could be of usage, right? So that's important. Then comes sustainable environmental policy approach to check environmental degradation. Now we have already discussed a lot on environmental degradation, various remedial measures. So environmental protection is inherent 
part of the sustainable development policy right so it describes a process in which natural resource base is not allowed to deteriorate and it emphasizes on the role of environmental quality and environmental inputs in the process of raising real income and quality of life so it's important that whatever work that we do we must check at the background is it environmental friendly or not right environmental inputs are very much important in raising any standard of society and economy so sustainable development includes the various policy measures to check environmental degradation and you can see here the first one is reducing poverty we have already talked about this in sustainable development goals right so poverty is one aspect which talks about the environment linkages with people right so sustainable development projects must talk about greater employment opportunities to reduce the poverty better health and family planning services education services right good supply of civic amenities like drinking water facilities sanitation alternate habitats in place of sums so if you don't have these facility remember it will be a burden on environment it will lead to pollution it will lead to unchecked pollution that we cannot actually you know manage at particular time period so that's important then second is the removing subsidies aspect now this is a very important aspect that we see in today's world if people get subsidies on certain things that is like electricity fertilizer pesticide diesel petrol gas irrigation water what happens there comes a important aspect related to a psychology with subsidy is that something is being given for less or for free so what happens people start using it ruthlessly right they forget the stewardship towards environment they forget the gratitude towards environment so subsidies should be either reduced or removed actually in terms of these particular resource usage by private and public sectors right that's very much important that could lead to the reduction in wasteful usage that's one aspect then clarifying and extending property rights now remember lack of property rights over excessive usage of resources leads to degradation of environment remember common property resources whosoever wants in the way they can utilize it and you know that leads to many times overgrazing issues in many public lands as well deforestation over exploitation of minerals and fishes so many times we have seen that because of these property rights not clearly defined there are issues as well then market based approaches now this is something related to the commodification besides regulatory measures remember aim at pointing to consumers and industries about cost of natural resources now if we buy a product and how many times do we know that what cost does it have on environment the product that we are buying so if we can make some kind of plan related to the pricing related to the cost of goods and services that has direct linkages on natural resources which could be reflected on maybe the packaging of it so that could actually make a sense to that consumer that if you are consuming this you are putting a pressure on a particular resource so this is what we are talking about market based approaches right so that's important to actually reduce the pollution and also wastage of resources then comes some regulatory policies that could be come into the picture of environmental degradation management so regulators have to take decision regarding what regarding pricing quality technology right all these things are important so when we have this control then automatically it will channelize environment into a sustainable manner sustainable utility of resources then comes economic incentives so economic incentives are usually in the form of what in the form of variable fees to resource users and quantity of pollutants in the air water and land use regulations on that right so remember if you are getting rebates on using less of electricity if you are getting rebates on using something which is less pollutant that could be one economic incentive right so subsidies are one aspect and incentives are another aspect suppose if you plant a tree and you get a subsidy that's one aspect of promotion you get an incentive right so if you plant a tree and if you get a rebate on your maybe house tax or rent that's important that could be one important economic incentive could be given from government sector right so there can be several things remember this is in terms of what could be done 
right? It's not what is being done or what has been already done, right? So there are several aspects that could be done. Then comes the trade policy. Now remember, trade policy in relation to environment is important here. So concerning domestic policy reforms as well as international trade policy reforms are needed if you take into consideration these policy reforms. So policy must talk about eco-friendly process of, remember, the trade that is non-polluting industries using cleaner technologies. So if pollution is happening and cleaner technologies are not being utilized, then this trade of international or domestic will always be harming environment at the same time, just developing the economy. So economy versus ecology debate is one aspect in policy. That's where environmental policy comes to the picture. Then comes the public participation. Now remember, no government, no NGO or civil society can work independently unless it has public awareness and participation as its core. For instance, scheme of eco-labeling of products. Remember, when you buy a product and it is eco-labeled, it says that how much eco-friendly is that product. It is one aspect where public awareness and participation is needed, right? So you must buy something which is eco-friendly that has to be inculcated amongst the public. The participation is needed, right? And especially for developing country like India with a huge population, environmental awareness through this kind of policies are important, right? Participation in global environmental efforts. Now, remember many conventions and declarations have been signed. Basel Convention, Rio Declaration, GATT Clause on Environment. But many times we find that not all the countries are signatories. Not all the countries have agreed to the conventions, right? So this is one problem. And many times we also talk about Paris Agreement. Now remember, the targets are going to be revised in 2030. And we are already into this Paris Agreement. And this is the way forward. And we are looking towards it in terms of the climate change. So our idea is to reduce the weight on the fossil fuels and the way forward is that if we want to sustain this particular planet in terms of environment in terms of good quality of life we must talk about the sustainability of these resources right so the idea is to look forward to the schemes that we are doing present on which the future depends will decide the future course of action, right? So that's where these environmental policies are important. Now let's look into environmental policy of India in short. So National Environmental Policy 2006 has these particular objectives. So conservation of critical environmental resources, intergenerational equity, that is the basic principle of sustainable development, efficiency in environmental resources usage, enhancement of resources, environmental governance, management of resources, livelihood security. Remember, it is one of the most important Important pillars where we talk about the poverty aspect, right? And then also integration of environmental concerns for socioeconomic development and furthermore, like policy plans and programs for socioeconomic development. So these things are major part of 2006 environmental policy, that is NEP 2006, right? So when we say NEP 2006, is it the first? No. Remember, Environmental Protection Act 1986 was earlier. So EPA 1986 was reviewed to make this 2006 national environmental policy and we have these particular frameworks. So now you see legal framework in India. Now here what are the legal framework? It means that what are the legalities and illegalities if you want to know in terms of environmental policy. How do we know? Through various protection acts. So remember Environmental Protection Act 1986. Water Prevention and Control Pollution Act, that is 1974, Water Cess Act 1977, Air Prevention and Control of Pollution 1981, Law in Respect of Management and Conservation of Forests and Biodiversity, remember 1927, then Reviewed 1980, Wildlife Protection Act 1972, and Biodiversity Act, that is 2003. So these are the various legal frameworks under which we look into these issues of environmental degradation, environmental pollution and so many other aspects of it. So now when we have discussed in details the various aspects of environmental policy, in the last lecture to come we will be talking about environmental legislations, conventions, protocol, treaties, all those aspects of environment. So stay tuned, stay safe, keep learning.